Your AI tool is pretty amazing right out of the box. It is great on its own. But what if you could install a couple of expansion packs that make it 10 times more useful? That's the promise of MCP servers. Today, I'll show you why they matter, how to think about them a little bit differently, and how to give Claude Code the gift of sight. You know the drill. You ask your AI coding agent to make a little change. It says it's done. You go take a look. Uh, nope. So you ask it to try again. Still nope. One more time? No. Are you tired of playing monkey in the middle? Hmm. Well, what if you could give your coding agent its own set of eyes to take a look for itself? This is where MCP servers come in. I know, I know, it sounds boring, but think of them like a secret expansion pack for your AI tool. MCP is the model context protocol that Anthropic developed in order to let AI tools talk to other tools. It was quickly adopted around the industry and it's what everybody is using to connect AI to the tools that we use every day. Behold, I give you the flow chart. So really in a nutshell, what we're saying is that AI tools, AI code editors, and other AI applications can connect to various MCP servers and through that server, connect to the tools that we use in our normal everyday life otherwise database tools, development tools, and productivity tools. In fact, this has proven so popular, there is a huge list of tools that provide MCP servers that you can install to your AI client and start using. The list of tools available is growing every day. So if there's something that you're specifically interested in, it is definitely worth going out and checking to see if there's already an MCP server provided by the company of the tool that you're looking for. Almost every big tool already has one. Notion, Google, OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, the list goes on and on. Today, I'll be using the Playwright MCP server. So what is Playwright? Playwright is a tool developed by Microsoft and it's used for automating user interface testing. Basically, it's the way you can automate any kind of testing that needs to be done in a browser environment. So we've all done this. You start out with a simple little app. Can you add another button that uh, shows the emojis of people and label it people? And then you make a change. Uh, yeah, over on that uh, modal, I, I want another button that says scary things and has all the like spooky kind of scary emojis. All right, oh, yeah. Then you make another change and they're just small changes. Uh, great, now can you swap the animals button and the flags button? But somewhere along the way, E, can you rename the animal button scary things? Ugh. You know where this is going. Suddenly you've got spaghetti code. You're not really sure what things are or where they are. And the next time you go in to make a change, you don't know what's happening. Hmm, hmm. Hmm, that's not scary. Can you rename the scary things button cute things? Come on. Yeah, cute things. Wait, cute things? Oh man. So I'm using Claude Code today, but this system works with all of the big players. This could be Codex, this could be Gemini CLI, this could be Cursor or Warp, or any one of a multitude of other tools. All right, so here we are. I am trying to change the button color on cute things. Can you change the color of the cute things button to red? Yep, no problem. And I go in and I look and see, that's not red. What's going on? I may or may not have noticed there's a second cute things button. So here's where Playwright comes in. To install an MCP server, you just have to find the installation instructions, usually on GitHub. Today, I'm in the Playwright MCP GitHub repository. And if you just go down to the README, there usually are instructions about how to install it. And you can see here, they have installation instructions for pretty much everything you can think of. I'm using Claude Code, so I am just going to cut and paste those instructions. I'm going to the directory where the project that I'm running resides. You could do this on a global level, but I, today I'm just gonna do it in the project level. You paste it in, you let it run. In this case, I already have it installed, but if I didn't, that's really all you have to do. Cut and paste and hit enter. 
Once you've done that, go into Claude. If you already have Claude open, close it and restart it. And it should be able to pick up your MCP server. And I'm going to hit slash MCP. And this should show you a list of MCP servers that you've installed. We can see Playwright right there. You can hit enter and go into the details. You can see the tools that it's got access to. These are just the things that Playwright can do. To get out of here, you just hit escape a couple of times. All right, let me stop here because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I already use Playwright. I've got Playwright installed and I use it to run tests. Why would I run an MCP server? This is where we give Claude eyes. So I've asked it to change the button on cute things to green. Claude thinks it worked. Uh, no, that didn't work. But if we notice back here, that guy got changed. That's not the one we were talking about. But if we didn't know that, we would just be in here super confused why Claude thinks the button changed and we don't think it did. So we could go, and in fact, I have gone around and around and around with Claude or any other coding agent saying, I don't see the change. And Claude says, well, I made the change. I'm not sure what else to do. It can't see what it's done. It can only look in the code and see what it thinks the changes that needs to be done. We want to let Claude see what we're seeing. That's why one of the best things you can do when you're trying to work with a system like this is to take a screenshot. You can come in here and take a snapshot and cut and paste it back to Claude and say, nope, this is what I see. Can you fix that? Wouldn't it be nice if we could get Claude to somehow be able to look and see what it did without us even having to intervene? So what I'm going to ask it to do is to use the Playwright MCP server. OK, that did not seem to quite work. Can you use the Playwright MCP server and use it to open up index.html in a browser, click on the more emojis button and look at the cute things button and take a screenshot and use that to figure out why that cute things button didn't get colored green? I know that's a very specific prompt and a long way to go, but let's take a look and see what it does. It's going to ask for permissions and we can see it opens it up in a browser. Next, it's going to click on the more emojis button. It's navigated to the cute things button. Perfect. Let me take a screenshot. Yes. Now, normally I would give it permission to do everything but I did want to let it walk through the steps this first time to make sure it's doing what I think that it's doing. And there you go. Perfect. Now I can see the issue. I can see the modal has opened with cute things as the title. Two, there's a cute things button inside the modal that is green. Well, turquoise teal color. In the background, I can see the main buttons and there's a red button, which is the cute things button from the main grid. Now let me analyze why the change didn't work. Looking at the screenshot and the HTML code I read earlier, I now understand the issue. There are actually two cute things buttons. So this has gotten to the heart of the issue. It identified the problem that there are two buttons with the same name to the human eye. They're probably not named the same thing inside the code. So one of the cool things about Playwright is it is taking screenshots and you can go in and take a look at them. It's over here under the dot playwright MCP and you can open up the images that it takes and you can see what it's seeing. And so if it can't figure out what exactly is going on, you at least can go in and try to figure out what it's seeing that you think you're seeing differently. So now that Claude has understood the problem, it's going to ask playwright to go out and take another picture of the main grid and see what's going on there. So now theoretically we can use Playwright as Claude's eyes instead of relying on our own. So I think we have a problem here. We have two buttons labeled cute things. We need to change the labels so that the label that the user can see matches the type of emojis that are inside of that button. Can you make that change and then use the Playwright MCP server to navigate to both of those buttons and use screenshots to verify that the correct changes have been made? And we're going to let it go off and do its job. We have given it a fresh set of its own eyes to go and verify that the things that we think we're asking for have actually happened and that it can see what we can see. All right, and it's back. So it's fixed the labeling and verified the changes with screenshots. 
Here's what was corrected. The cute things was changed to scary things. The modal cute things was changed to animal emojis. The modal button was changed from cute things to animal emojis. And then it took screenshots for verification, animal emojis on the modal button, and it believes it is correct. And if we wanna see what it did, again, we can go in and open up the screenshots and see what it saw. We are back to scary things and animal emojis, which is back to what we would expect. All right, so that was definitely a very wordy prompt at the end and obviously a kind of contrived example. But this situation is not contrived. I've definitely been in a situation where I've asked for a change to a, a web page header and it just can't figure out what I'm asking for or it can't figure out how to do what I'm asking for. The CSS was just like layers and layers deep and I didn't know how to untangle it. So. At the time, I was just completely stuck and I thought, I don't know what I would do here. There has to be a better way. So obviously you wouldn't wanna have to type that in every single time. I think the better answer would be to write a custom slash command, make your own prompt, something like uh, play right eyeballs or something. Use it so that you could specify that what you were trying to do was have Claude run the Playwright MCP server, take screenshots and use those screenshots to verify the changes that were being requested were actually the changes that had been made. I think it would be just that simple. And you could then either make it part of your process, maybe every time you're doing a full end-to-end -end testing, but you could honestly, you could run this every single time you're making an interface change. There wouldn't be anything wrong with that. As long as you have time and tokens, I think it, could be a really nice way to verify that the changes are being made and take yourself out of the loop. Now this does require that you have really good design specs or a really good design doc or a really good prompt that really spells out what it is you're expecting. Because yes, Claude or whatever coding tool you're using will have an image to go by, but if you were sort of fuzzy in your expectations of what you were asking for, it's only as good as what you put in. As much as I have said, these tools are like magic, they really are not magic. They really are doing what they can with the language that we're giving them. And if our language is imprecise, which I know I suffer from quite a bit, we're gonna get an imprecise output. So the more help that we can give these tools, the better they're gonna be. And this, I feel like, is a, a huge help. It's giving an extra sense to Claude code. And that expansion is just gonna make it 20 times better and help take me out of the loop for some of the more tedious changes. All right, so hopefully that convinced you to go take a look at what other MCP servers are out there. This is not a way that I had imagined using an MCP server. I was kind of thinking of them as, tools that I could hook into in order to use that tool externally. Maybe save some information in a Notion doc or a Google Drive. I was not thinking of them as tools that I could use to feed back into Claude and power it up. But this really, to me, is just expanding the capabilities of my AI coding tools in a way that I didn't expect. I'm not sure what else I'm gonna stumble into, but I am now very curious to take a look and see what else is out there and what else maybe I could do with them. I hope maybe this gave you some ideas of either ways you yourself could use Playwright with your coding tool, or maybe some ideas of what you might be interested in looking for in other MCP servers. This is a whole area I really hadn't explored. I knew they were out there and conceptually I understood what they did, but I had not taken the time to see if I could figure out how to use them. And now that I know just how easy it is to install and use them, I am definitely gonna take a look, see what else is out there and see what else I can do. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.